Hello and welcome back to Phil's Drone Zone. And in particular, welcome back to part 12 of Learning Piece by Piece, the complete beginner's guide to working in Motion 5. If you are a first time visitor here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that bell so that you can stay updated when we upload future videos in the series. Also, if you are very new to Motion, I would suggest going back to some of the earlier tutorials in the series. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at that question, clone or duplicate. And in simple projects, a duplicate is probably enough. But let's take a look at some of the reasons why you might just want to use a clone. Okay, you can see I've set up a square and I've coloured it red and I have given um, a green outline with a width of around about 38. I've added a Gaussian blur filter, which I've set to 10. And I've also added a dazzle filter from the glow and the amount to 55, brightness 90, threshold 20, and the spike count at seven. And I've also clicked crop to keep it within the frame. And then finally, I've added an edge filter and I've set that intensity to 13. And after all that filtering, I've come up with this little shape. Okay, let's duplicate this a couple of times. So we will duplicate this three times. Okay, good. I will just position these so I get them into some sort of um, half decent shape. This is not too accurate. I'm not really bothered about being accurate for the purposes of this tutorial. Okay, so having done that, let's go back to my original one. And now let's change the color. So we'll change the color. And as you can see, only the original color changes. Now, if I wanted to change the color for all the others, I'd have to go in individually to all the others and change and change it there. If any of the other parameters in the shape or whether it's a text, then I have to, again, you can see it's the only the original that's changing and I'd have to do each one of those squares individually um, in order to achieve them all looking the same. If I want to change the filters also, if I change the intensity, you can see it's only the original that changes and I'd have to go in and change the settings for each and every one of the four squares. Not such a big deal, I guess, if there's only four, but let's try something else. Let's delete the duplicates. Let's get rid of the, all of those and let's now right click and make a clone layer, or you can click K on the keyboard. So we'll duplicate that clone layer four times, three times. Uh, you could um, clone the clone, but might as well duplicate. It's just a duplicate of a clone, so it does the same job. So we'll position all these out as before. Don't have to be accurate while you're playing around like this. And then we'll go back now to our original change the color and as you can see now they all change color so maybe that's going to save me a little bit of time and effort also with any of the other shape or text parameters they will all change when I alter these parameters similarly with the filters if I change the blur amount they all change and so the, the parameters are being transferred from the original to the clone layer. If I in increase the intensity, you can see they all follow the same um, instruction. So let's say I want to rotate it a little bit. Something's gone wrong there. Now, these parameters in the properties box, unfortunately, they don't get um, transferred to the clone layers. So if you want to alter these, even with a clone, you're still going to have to alter those one by one for each of the four. Okay, so let's now do something else. We'll scale this down and then we'll position that somewhere. And then we will clone the group. So we'll make a clone layer of the group. 
Now what I'll do is I'll duplicate the clone layer four times. And I'll position these out. So I've got some sort of pattern. And now I've got 20 squares. But it's okay, because if I now go back to my original, because they are all clones, and I change the color, all 20 squares are going to change at the same time. Now, maybe you're starting to see that we can actually start saving time here. Okay, let's see what happens when we try to animate our rectangle. So, let's go to the original um, rectangle, and for the sake of the tutorial, for demonstration purposes, we'll go basic motion move, and we'll just drag that over to get it to move. Now when we play, we've only got the original square moving. Okay, so maybe it's in the wrong place. Maybe I need to add it to the group. So let's move the behavior up to the group and then let's see what happens. And only the original group moves. Now this is because behaviors don't always work in the same way as filters do. So let's delete that and let's try and work out what we can do. Well, we can group both groups together to make one group, but I'm gonna do it differently. I'm just gonna grab one of the clones and I'm going to right click and duplicate again. So now I have five clones, I'll go to the inspector and reset the position to center and then I will disable the original group containing the four squares. Now I just have five clones showing and the original group is disabled. But that's okay because now I can animate Go to the group with the five clones. I'll add oscillate behavior and we'll oscillate on the opacity, of course, to get flashing. We'll make the wave shape square, the phase at 60, amplitude 80, and the speed to 60. We'll go to behaviors, parameters, quantize, and we will again set that to opacity and we'll make that 60%. And that will then give us the flashing on and off effect. And we have certainly saved a lot of time there. But what happens now if I go to my original group, which is disabled, and I go to my original rectangle and change the color? Well, even though it's disabled, I can still now change the parameters in the shape, in the shape tab. And so we can change the filter settings, we can change the behavior settings in our group, um, and we don't have to worry about doing these things one square at a time, which is going to save us a lot of time as we've got 20 squares in our, um, in our project at the moment. So for more complex projects, then it's a very useful tool. But I'm just going to zoom in a little bit now because I'm going to change the shape. I've decided I don't like the shape. So I'm going to go to my original rectangle. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the mask tool at the bottom here, and I'm going to select the Bezier mask. So I'm going to go up to my original square, and I'm just going to make three points and create a triangular mask. And as you can see, when we go back to fit and we play, as you can see, the shape has changed for all the elements, not just the original. So even the properties of a mask, um, if placed on the original square, will transfer to all the clone squares. One of the great things that I like about clones is that, um, unlike duplicates, it will allow you to reverse an animation or a very complex, sometimes very complex animations. So um, what I want to do, what I've set up here is I've set up the exploding logo, the exploding motion logo you can see, and I want to reverse that animation so that it comes back in 
and ends up as the logo. Now I made this exactly the same way as we made the exploding pillow in the last group. So if you want to uh, know how to make that, then just uh, pop along to that tutorial and um, you can check that out. So what I want to do is I want to reverse that animation to make a lower third. So I'm going to make a clone layer of the group. Now, when I've made the clone layer, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to go to timing of the group, the clone, and I'm going to click reverse. And now I'm going to disable the original group. So now what I've got is a reversal of the animation and I want to find the spot where I want the image to appear somewhere around about there I guess and then I will move the image up to that point where I need it to appear and then I will stretch that out for as long as I as I need it in the animation okay so now what I've got is a total reversal of the animation where it's not exploding out, it's actually coming back in and creating the logo. And then I can add lower third text and what have you. If I want to then animate that out, I can simply make another clone layer of that group and animate, reverse the animation. And so that's quite a nifty little trick that you can do with clone groups and you can reverse sometimes very complex animation and that will save you a ton of time. So if you're working in a project um, in which you have to make multiple duplicates then you might as well use clones because you could end up saving yourself a lot of time and effort in the long run. There are also clones are very useful for um, reversing some quite complex animations. And that's it for this video. If you like the video, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. It all, all helps in the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget, click that subscribe button and hit the bell so that you'll be updated when we upload future videos in the series. All that remains to be said now is see you in part 13.